Hello, my name is David Larson, KK4WW. I've been licensed since 1953. Currently, we run the LCF group here in Floyd, Virginia, and we also administer the Foundation for Amateur International Radio Service, and our call is M4USA at the Foundation. Today, we're going to talk about a collectible amplifier, the Heathkit HA14, built in 1965. This amplifier is still a useful amplifier. You can buy parts for it and it's quite easy to, to repair and keep operating. I think you'll enjoy uh, looking at it. We're going to pull the inside out, look at it, look at some of the schematic diagrams, and just get a little feel for the amplifier. I'm talking to you today about the H14 amplifier for several reasons. First of all, even though it was made in 1965, it's currently a still a good amplifier. You could buy tubes for it and all the parts are generally available. You could use it as a mobile or base station, and it's very simple to use and a very effective amplifier. I like it because also the tube, the 160 amplifier tube, back in 1963 and 64, I personally built an amplifier with four of those tubes, Mobile, for a Mobile that would run 1,000 watts of output. And that was a real experience. And maybe one of these days I'll dig that amplifier out and, and show you that one as well. We're going to be talking about the H14 single sideband linear amplifier, 1,000 watts input, 500 watts output, made by the Heath Company. This manual is dated 1965. This is a simple amplifier in terms of its operation. This is the back of the amplifier. Here's the RF input, the RF output, the DC power connections and the control connections, and the high voltage is isolated. Since it's 2,000 volts, there's a separate connector for the high voltage. Let's take a look at the overall amplifier. Here's the tuned input circuitry down here. You see an individual coil for each band. Here are the tubes, the parasitic chokes, the choke back here that keeps the DC separated from the RF, the high voltage, RF coming through here. Here's the tank circuit, the coils, the inductors. Here's the switch that switches the tank circuit. This switches the input. And here's the capacitor that tunes the tank circuit. This little thing back here is a choke that keeps the filaments uh, separated from the DC filament and the RF drive. Here's a little meter for the SWR bridge and a little controller for that. And some input circuitry back here. The SWR bridge is back here. The relay and uh, the input circuitry. The basic amplifier has the RF coming in through the cathodes, being amplified by the tubes. And there's circuitry here, some RF chokes in the DC supply to the filaments and an RF choke and a capacitor. This is a 2,000 volt that supplies the tubes. These chokes prevent the RF from going back into the DC supplies, allowing it to operate properly up here and be amplified by the tubes and go out this way. A little capacitor here decouples the high voltage from the output, so there's no 2,000 volts out here, but the RF able to pass through. And here are the little parasitic suppressors that keep the circuit from oscillating at unusually high frequencies. Let's look at the uh, output circuitry, RF circuitry, coming from the tube decoupled. So the DC is taken off here, coming through the resonant circuit here, uh, which is tuned to the proper frequency with this capacitor over here and the proper switch setting. Notice going to ground through this choke. This choke again eliminates the RF from the DC, from the uh, RF frequency, so that uh, it's at ground potential and the RF goes out here to the output circuit. The actual output coming down from the tank circuit through the switching relay, through the little coupling devices that connect it to the sending wave and power bridge on out to the antenna. Here's the DC power supply. It's about uh, 11 inches square with a transistor on each side. This generates over 2,000 volts for the high voltage. Of course, the filament is run directly from the battery. Here's the battery input to the power supply. The high voltage is separate. It's the 2,000 volts, so it's a separate high voltage uh, connection. And here's a connection to the amplifier for the high voltage, and here's a connector that goes in to the back of the amplifier. I mentioned that the tubes are really available. I think they're still made, but if not, they're really available to a number of uh, suppliers. We uh, actually won a set of four of these at the Dayton Hamvention DX dinner several years back, made by the Russian company Svetlana. This is a 572B. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this educational video on the HA14 linear amplifier. 
that still look very good amplifier, a collectible amplifier, and available at many flea markets. Happy Ham Radio Operating.